Chapel family. Bueno, you ready for starting the meeting? Okay. <laughs> bueno, I pray uh, in English. Okay. Uh, I need que you want get up, please. <laughs> Stand up. Yeah. Father to God, thank you. We we just have gratitude for you for your salvation, for you, you, we, we can uh, change the li the our life for you, love. Thank you, Father. Thank you for, for you, you had every day we fa fight for we walk your way. Thank you, Father. Thank you, we need you all time. We need you to, to, to feel your presence, your beautiful presence today. We need you, Father. Thank you for the service. Thank you for my daughter, Karen, which we, she stay here with us. And thank you for all day. We need you, you speak it, each, each, each one of us. Thank you, Father, for the service and for all the people, in the name of the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, now I want to sit down, please. I, I want to present and my daughter, que she sing, okay? Sing one song for, for you, for God, okay? Come on, Karen. She's Karen. Hi. God bless you. Cristo, yo te amo. Cristo, yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Jesús. Cristo, yo te amo. Cristo, yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Jesús. Y no sé donde estuviera si yo a ti no te tuviera si no hubiera conocido al Dios que me ama Cristo, yo te amo. Cristo, yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Jesús. Y no sé donde estuviera si yo a ti no te tuviera si no hubiera conocido al Dios que me ama al Dios 
que me ama al Dios que me ama Beautiful, Karen. Thank you for sharing with us and for taking care of that one. Good morning. Oh, you guys snuck in. It's good to see everybody here. We are going to do I Am Thine, O oh Lord. And you're going to have to stand and sing really loud because there's no one here. Everybody stay standing because that wasn't very good. If you want to sit, you gotta sing loud. Okay? Wow. <laughs> Rock of Ages. <laughs> 
See what happens when you change the tempo? <laughs> Good morning, Chapel family. Um, it was the last week in February. This week starts March already. Where did winter go? We had it last Saturday and Friday. <laughs> now it's spring. Briefly. At least the mountain has white on it now. Um, we <coughs> have praise reports. We have Larry Harvey and Danny Godwin. We have prayer requests. We have Les Battershell, Jackie McClanahan, Wayne Mayfield, Johnny Jones, Cheyenne Johnson, Dean Hawkins, and he is in the final stage of a bout of brain cancer. So we can pray for his gentle passing. He is expected to last about a week. Charlie Greener, Marcella, Jessica Cabrera, Delma Hartnett, Cindy Eggleson, Dean Hawkins, Luke, Janice, Sonny Rothmeyer, Emily Sains, Matthew Wyman, <coughs> DJ and her dad, Kaylin Salazar, Paul Vescovo Jr., and Sammy. We also need some prayers for the family of the dear departed loved ones this week. We have Casey Carden and J.B. Rogers, who is a member of this church, and Billy Graham. So we have some losses to pray for this week for their families and the healing. We have some February birthdays. We have Kayla Barnes today. We have anniversaries. We have Frank and Emma Ramirez. We have Fabian and Romina. And then we have Brenda Flynn, another birthday coming up. Uh, Children's Sunday School is 10.30 here during the services. Kids Club is Thursday nights at 5.30 with Amy and Romina. Uh, adult Sunday School, but uh, actually it's open to everyone, is at 9.30 and it's led by Penny. We have the Ladies Fellowship at 4 o'clock on Tuesdays and we've been having them over at Romina's house. So if you need directions, just let us know. It's been very, very interesting and we have a lot of good laughs. Even studying the Bible, we laugh. Uh, Discipleship Bible Study is a self-driven, self-paced study program. See Daryl for the information. And we have a baby shower coming up on Wednesday at 5.30 here at the chapel for Romina. So if you uh, would like to go, uh, you can get the details from me after the service here. And that's it for announcements. Daryl, you're on? <coughs> or another song? Delma Hartnett's actually here today. She's feeling better, but keep praying for continued strength. 
And I think we're moving Fabian and Romina this week into their new place, I think. So I'm not sure where the ladies' Bible study will be this week. Well, the Bible study is on Tuesday. Oh, here? you're going to be here? Here, here at the here. chapel on Tuesday. That would probably be a good idea. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Um, that's it. Penny's not here Penny to, to give a prayer. So, uh, Daryl, are you on? We'll just. bow our heads and ask God to be with us during this service today. Lord, there was uh, so many needs presented today, and we just ask that you will uh, meet those needs, whether they're, whether it's physical needs or spiritual needs, we all, we all are dependent on you, Lord, and that dependency brings us, humbles us and turns us towards you. I pray that as we go through this service that we're reminded of all of the blessings that you give us, but more so that you receive the praise and honor due your name through us today. It's with this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to sing This Is My Father's World. It's a little newer song, but I think it's still in the hymnal. Do you all want hymnals? I'll take that as a no. I'll see if I can follow. sing in the garden if you want to sing with me and know the words go right ahead
Isn't it great that God does walk with us wherever we are? Let's just pray for the service today. Father, we thank you for your graciousness, for your goodness, for your love, for your patience and kindness and faithfulness. Help us learn to be just like Jesus. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears to hear what you want us to hear today. Make it personal. Let us feel like you are talking exactly to us and just to me alone, to each individual person here alone. This is our time with you, God, where we dedicate this short, short time to hearing from you. We give you all the praise and all the glory, and it's in your precious name I pray, amen. It might be me. <laughs> I hope not. All right. I wanted to start with something out of this book that I read last week. It's, um, it's a, a devotional book, and it kind of delves into different preachers and, and uh, anecdotes that they had, little stories. And I just thought this one was appropriate today as I was looking for the sermon for today. It says, when Sunday comes around, many a preacher says to himself, what under the sun shall I preach about? And the people, after they had heard him, say, what under the sun did he preach about? <laughs> that was in 1860. It was a preface to a book, Pulpit, uh, by Pulpit uh, Anecdotes. So they used humor way back then also. Today we're going to talk about the tale of two women, and as we get into this, as I was looking for what to preach on this week, I did a, a wedding on Saturday for Melanie's cousin, and as they showed me the rings that they gave each other, it had a verse out of the book of Ruth written on it, on each ring, and I just thought, what an appropriate sermon to have at this time of year or any time of the year to talk about friendships and the importance of friendships and how we grow spiritually as a body of Christ when we get to know one another, when we can share with one another, become close friends. Because 70% of Americans say that they have very few close friends and 40% say they only have maybe one. There's a great lack of friendship that, that's going on in our world today. And I, if I did a raise of hands right here, it may be somewhat true in this room, although in a smaller community we have a better chance because there's just so many things that are drawing our attention away from the time that it takes to build relationships. We have longer working days, we have the internet and constant job uh, relocations, we have things that keep us preoccupied and cripples those relationships that we should have. Life is not good without friends. Friends come alongside of you, they're, they're the people that pull you through different things in your life and a close friend is one that you can confide in no matter what's going on in your life. God himself said it's not good for man to be alone, and we always think of that in a marriage context, but that's not what it means necessarily only. God has designed us for relationships. He's designed us to have those come and share the journey of faith with one another. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, it says two are better than one because they can have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. As you know, in this ministry here, we come across a lot of people that have stumbled and fallen, and, and many times it's left up to the chaplain, either one of us, Fabian or I, to come alongside someone. And that's not the type of friendship I'm talking about. That's ministry. But what if that person had that type of friend that already knew Christ and was right there for them? And we do build those friendships, but it's different in ministry. You're actually giving advice. You're, you're trying to help them spiritually. 
We're a friendship. It's a mutual giving and receiving from one another. And these two women, as we get into this story, Naomi and her family, her husband and two sons, had left the promised land, Israel, and gone to Moab. There was a great famine that had taken place in Israel, so they moved to where they could survive. And as they spent their years there, they came to a point where that a husband got killed and the parents. And I'm going to have some help. I, I can do it. There we go. All right. This morning when um, their mom called us and she had said she wasn't going to be able to make it to church, Melanie and I talked with each other and we said it's important for us uh, to do this, to bring them to church. And um, it might be a little disruptive, but to me, to have a great nephew that wants to be up here, that, you know, today when I prayed, they came and got on the bench with me down here when I was praying before service. They see, and it's important, it's important for that. So I know that if I can preach with him here, <laughs> if you don't listen to me, but God is good. But Naomi, she had lost her husband. And her sons had grown and married two women from uh, Moab and uh, Moabite women. And they too perished, the two sons. So she's left without a husband, without any sons. And so that's the build up to this story. Because what a time that you need a friend when those kind of things are going on. And... So she had those two daughter-in-laws, and she says to them, you know, you go on back to your homes because I need to go back to Israel. And so she gives them that offer. Ophrah, that's the one daughter-in-law, she takes her up on it and heads home. But Ruth, and this is the important part of this story, Ruth says, no, I'm going to stay with you. And I want to read the verse that was written, part of the verse that was written on that ring from that wedding Saturday. Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Isn't that an amazing response? Where she could have gone back and found a husband in her own country, but instead she chose to stay with Naomi and to follow her through. Ed, Edgar Jackson, he describes grief this way because you can imagine Naomi with all that loss in her life. She wasn't pleasant to be around. Grief is a silent, knife-like terror and sadness that comes a hundred times a day when you start to speak to someone that is no longer there. Grief is the emptiness that comes when you eat alone after eating with another for many years. Grief is teaching yourself to go to bed without saying goodnight to the one who has died. Grief is the helpless wishing that things were different when you know that they are not and they never will be again. You see, Naomi, she needed a friend. She needed somebody to draw close to her and to be with her. And so Ruth, with that decision she made to stay with her, that was so important for her. I want us to understand this in our Christian friendships today that we need that type of friendship because we're going to yeah. face those times of grief. We're going to face those times when we're going to have twins up here. <laughs> <laughs> this might be getting out of control. <laughs> okay, onward Christian soldiers. That friend will help you lead you into God's purposes. God has designed those friendships that way. We, we don't always, we need someone alongside of us to, to guide us sometimes, to, to bring us God's word and to remind us of what God is speaking to us about. David Brenner, he's a Christian psychologist, and he said sacred companions, that's what he calls those good friends, a sacred companion. And he says the essence of Christian spirituality is following Christ on a journey of personal transformation. And I, 
I wanted to just interject here because none of us are perfect. I mean, have we come to that conclusion? And it is that transformation that's taking place in our lives. And as we have someone to, to walk with us through that, we see that transformation taking place in someone else's life as well. That's the growth of the body of Christ. That's the growth of us spiritually. The distant land to which we are called is not heaven. It is the new creature in which Christ wishes to fashion us. The whole and a holy person that finds his or her uniqueness, identity, and calling in Christ. You're not going to, you may find that on your own, and many have, but having a friend that will guide you along that way and take that journey with you is where this story is going today. It's where Naomi, without Ruth, we would have never come to the conclusion of this story and the way God was blessed by it, the way God was honored and glorified by it. In Matthew 18, 20, Christ is telling us, For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. As you are close with someone and you pray together or you read scripture together, and it can be a husband or a wife, but as you do that, that relationship with Christ grows because he is there with you. Ruth, speaking with um, in the book, 122, it says, So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. She asked somebody to accompany her. She needed somebody. Someone to tag along and stay in sight. <coughs> Have you asked somebody like that to enter into your life? Have you found that kind of friend because there's five characteristics that I'm going to go over today that, that are what you want to look for in that friend or if you, th that you want to be to be that friend. And one is to share. Friends share with one another. It's not like discipleship. That's what I was trying to get at earlier. You know, when I disciple somebody, I'm passing on the knowledge I have of Christ, taking them through Scripture and teaching them the basics of Christianity, the foundations that they need for their faith. And it's not mentoring, because mentoring is that the expert passing it on to someone else, the wisdom. And it's not counseling, one person giving advice. That's not the kind of friendship I'm talking about here. This friendship is a two-way street. It's wisdom and strength that flows back and forth between two people. Not every time are you on top of your game spiritually. Someone else, your friend, may be at that point when you're not, and they can come alongside you and lift you up. They can be that person in your time of grief that's gone through grief and knows how it works out, but not to give advice, but just to be there, to have someone to talk with. It's a friendship that's reciprocal. That's important because that strength flows back and forth. When you're not strong, they can be there holding you up. Naomi, she's older. She was the mother-in-law. She had the advantage, and yet they had this relationship between her and Ruth where Ruth was there for her when she needed her. And you'll see through the story that Naomi was there for Ruth also. It's a type of friendship that God can move in that relationship and have his purposes fulfilled in both people. That's an important thing to learn in a friendship. You, don't, you relate together as peers. So as we go through this story, look at this, how this friendship worked between them. Friends are honest, and that's, that's where we're getting at here. The second point, they're sharing, they shared with each other. Naomi shared that grief, and, and Ruth was there. She had lost her husband as well, so they shared in that grief. And they were honest because Naomi... She says to Ruth, you know, I'm past the age of remarrying. You go on. You find a husband. And Ruth said, no, I'm going to stay with you through this. They were honest with each other. And Naomi, like I said, she wasn't a happy person to be around. She was at the bottom of the bottom, having lost two sons and a husband. But she had somebody in Ruth to stand alongside of her during those failures and fears and and do you have that type of person? 
when you're disappointed? Do you have someone that you can talk to in that time of disappointment? You know, of course, we're bringing it to God, but God brings you that special friend. Even when things in your life aren't flattering or when they aren't Christian, do you have someone that you can share with that will, that will be alongside you and say, hey, I've been there. I'm not perfect. I'm just here for you. As Ruth goes into the fields, it was that time of harvest, and Ruth went to glean after the harvest guys, the guys that would go and harvest the field, whatever they dropped or didn't get, the widows and orphans were allowed to go into the field and, and glean from the field, get some food. And so that was what Ruth was doing. And she found favor with the owner of that field. And he's told his workers, leave a little extra when you're gleaning, when you're harvesting this field. Just miss a little bit so this lady can, can take care of my relative. That's an important thing right there. Because Boaz, the owner of this field, was a relative of Naomi's. And each day, Ruth would go off and clean, glean those fields. Naomi knew who Boaz was, of course, and they talked. And Naomi said, maybe Boaz would exercise his right as a kinsman to redeem my husband's land, his family's land. And so Ruth, not being an Israelite, didn't understand all that, so she explained to her that he could do that. He could be a kinsman redeemer. And a different side to this story, if we went into that, is how this pictures the redemption of Christ in our life. He purchased for us. He made that purchase. He's our kinsman redeemer. But Ruth 3.16 says, When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her. They began that relationship, and Naomi encouraged that relationship. They were friends that were honest and held nothing back. They shared. And the third thing is they accepted one another. I'm your friend no matter what. That's an important person to have in your life. No matter what. When you're at the worst of your worst, sometimes, you know, we have that with our children, but that's not the friendship that we're talking about either. It's deeper. It's one that says, no matter what you're going through, I'm going to stay beside you. As I said, Naomi, if, if we looked at her Facebook status, it would be widowed, likes, nothing. <laughs> Interest, being left alone. And friends, none. Except Ruth. Ruth had come to be there with her. Naomi pushed people away. And Ruth, she didn't try to fix Naomi. She was just there for her. See, that's the acceptance. When you go into a friendship, that's the acceptance that you need to be for that person or they need to be for you. That you're not at the top of your game. That you're not pleasant to be around at that moment, but they stick with you. She doesn't, Ruth didn't try to cheer her up. She didn't try to say, come on, Naomi, you're not that old. <laughs> you know, she didn't try to say anything like that. She was just there for her. Why don't we walk together? Why don't we see where God leads us? That was the encouragement she gave, not trying to change her, just to show her that God still had a purpose for her. David Benner says he's a, in Christian fellowship. It's a place where others are accepted as they are for the sake of who they can become. You see that vision for your friend, that vision for you, is that I believe, as well as you should believe, that God has that purpose for you and where he is leading you, it's special to you. What he has for you is special for you. Wherever you're at work or wherever you do for a living, God has something special in that for you to provide for you and to give you opportunities to share what he's done for you with others and to find those friends, to come close alongside with someone. Pastor Scott Salas, he tells a story of a nursery worker. And this nursery worker was taking care of kids, probably similar to my nephews. <laughs> and as, uh, as the mom came to get these, these two, it was two kids too, two boys. 
As she came in to get those two boys, the nursery worker said, well, we had a little problem. You know, one of the boys uh, punched one of the other little boys, and, and, and so the mom lets out an, uh, you know, a cuss word. It was a new lady to the church, and she cussed at the boys or something like that, and then left in a huff. And that nursery worker, rather than just give up, she went to the pastor and said, was there a new person in church today that filled out any information? And he said, yes, there was. And she looked, and sure enough, this mom had filled out a little thing on a, on a visitation card. And she said, Pastor, would it be okay if I wrote her a letter? And so she wrote a letter. And she said, uh, you know, it was, glad, it was refreshing. Uh, your, your kids were good to have in Sunday school. I don't think she was lying. <laughs> but it was refreshing, your response, because even though it's not common, it was honest. You were frustrated. I would like to become friends. And you know, through that letter, that woman would have probably never come and back, came back to that church. She wouldn't have come back. But because of that letter, she came back and kept coming back and had that opportunity to hear God's message for her. That's what Christian fellowship is like. That's what it means for us when we, you know, we're, we try to get to know one another. We try to get that basis of friendship to where we can share on that level, to where you can be honest. That's the transforming power of friendship. If that lady hadn't reached out, who knows? God used her to reach somebody. Friends pay attention, and this is a tough part for me. Um, focusing on, on others, sometimes it's very hard to do. Can anybody relate to that? you got so much going on in your own life or even in ministry that focusing on an individual becomes very difficult on their needs their questions, their struggles, or their moods. But we need to be there as a friend. We need to focus that attention. What is God doing in that person's life and in their circumstance that I can relate to and, and walk with them through instead of focusing on my own needs? Ruth was attentive. You can just see that from the story as you read it. Anybody that would just do that and just give up their opportunity to stay with their comfort zone and go with Naomi to another land. She was attentive. Naomi, she was attentive in the fact that she saw that Boaz was taking care of Ruth with special attention, and she encouraged that relationship. So they saw. They slowed down enough to see the needs of each other and to meet those needs as friends, paying attention. That's an important part of friendship. And the last thing is to encourage one another to mature as, as Christians. You know, that distinguishes all the other kind of friendships as one that's genuinely someone's concerned about where you are spiritually. To pray for you, to walk you through those tough times in life. In Ecclesiastes, it says in 4.12, though one may be overpowered, Two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And the reason it says three strands with two people is that third person is God himself. Ruth committed, if you remember that, your God will be my God. Ruth committed to give up her idolatry because that's what was common in her land and her religion. She said, your God, Naomi, will be my God. That was a commitment of faith that she made. She left that idol worship. She married Boaz, and this is the neat part of the story. This is where it all comes together. And I pray you see that coming together in your life, that you see God working out different things. Because when she married Boaz, they had a son, and he would be the grandfather of King David part of the lineage of Christ. He used Ruth, a heathen woman, idolatrous woman, 
who chose God, who chose to be a friend, who chose to walk a very difficult walk, to not take the comfortable way out, but to do what God was putting in her heart to do, and she was obedient to it. And that final scene of the story, it shows that bitter Naomi, she is now bouncing Obed on her knee. The grandson, the lineage of Jesus. Can you imagine how that it was all put together? God is good, isn't he? Her life's work, it wasn't wasted at all. Naomi went through a tough time, but God walked her through that and used her to fulfill the lineage of Christ. Two women, widowed, childless, far from home, far from God at one point. But God brought them, those two together so that they could have that deep relationship to be able to walk through a tough time of life together. And I don't know where you are. I don't know what your disappointments have been or what your failures are or what's in your journey right now, but I know that it's a journey of transformation because you're here. Don't give up. Find someone. You know, when you're praying to the Lord, pray for a close friend. Pray for someone to come along that can understand where you're at. And then pray that you have the strength to be that friend back to them. Because God will use you. He'll use you as a friend and use a friend in your life, someone who loves you no matter what, someone who encourages you to be more like Jesus, someone that will help you grow. I pray that you learn something from under the sun <laughs> today because it's, it's tough. Sometimes we want to we wanna just preach those tough things. And There was, there was a, a neat little story about Spurgeon in here, and I did want to end with that. Because it is a redemption story, what we're talking about here. Spurgeon went into this church, and he said uh, it had been a big snowstorm. And this isn't the joke that you're thinking. He went in, and there was very few people in church, and he was really seeking God. And the preacher didn't make it to church, so just a layman was up preaching. And he said, the man read right from his notes, you know, it was boring. And all of a sudden, the man stopped preaching and looked right at him and said, Son, you need Jesus. Until you find Jesus, you'll never find the joy or the, the peace that you need in your life. And this was just coming from a layman. And Spurgeon was taken back. And the man just kept going, You need Jesus, son. And Spurgeon walked up and was prayed for and accepted Christ. And if you know the the story of Charles Spurgeon, the great preacher of England. That was his beginning from a guy that didn't even know how to preach, but he knew how to share the love of Christ. You see, that's where as a friend, you don't need to be a professional friend. You just need to have a heart for God and a heart for others. Let's pray. Father, as we leave this service today, I pray that we will just find that person or be that person to somebody. That we will make a difference in this world and be used for your purposes by something that we've been given from you, and that's a love and compassion for others. The ability to pay attention and to follow through. And I pray that we will take the experiences that you have taken us through and help us to share those with others. Our moments of faith, our moments of trust, that those will be on the tip of our tongue when someone asks, where do you find this hope? And we point to you, Lord. All glory to you. I pray as Spurgeon that if anyone here is seeking you in a new way, I pray that you will come to them in a special way, meet their needs, give them that peace that only comes through you. I pray that salvation will knock on each door today afresh. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody stand up. We're going to sing this as a prayer to God.
so he does bless America. <laughs>